ghostly goings on, psychic powers, dark magic and the occult might be more at home in an Elder Scrolls game, but there are numerous incidents of the supernatural creeping its way into the Fallout series as well. Let's begin with ghosts and the story of Lucy Granchester. <laughs> Lucy was the daughter of Morticia and Hannibal Granchester. During childbirth, her mother nearly died and her father, never wanting a child in the first place, began to resent his daughter. It wasn't long before it became evident that something was very wrong with the young girl. She was fascinated by fire and would often throw insects into the flames to watch them burn, and legend has it that she would actually capture and skin small animals. Their skins were found nailed to the undersides of the furniture. Morticia became convinced her daughter was being possessed by an evil spirit, and although Hannibal believed he could simply beat it out of the girl, Morticia instead sought out the aid of a psychic. Evidence now suggests that the psychic was a charlatan, however, they still convinced Morticia that she needed to make it harder for the spirits to find her daughter by confusing them with staircases and doorways to nowhere and even an upside down room. Unsurprisingly, these tactics were unsuccessful and things began to escalate as Lucy made her first attempt to kill her parents by poisoning their dessert. They both survived, although Hannibal would walk with a cane from then on. On her next attempt, however, she was much more direct and successful. One day, her father went to Lucy's room to punish her. However, he was later found with a pair of scissors driven through his eye and into his brain. Lucy claimed she was holding them in self-defense as he tried to beat her with his cane. She said he tripped and fell onto the scissors. When asked why his fingers had all been cut off, she replied that it was so he couldn't hold the cane again. Lucy's mother didn't fare any better. She was found dead in the master bedroom, with a cloth doll stuffed in her mouth and rope burns on her wrists, although no rope was ever found. Following the double murder, Lucy was committed to an asylum, where she would spend the rest of her childhood. However, on her 18th birthday, she escaped. Nine days later, she was found hanging in the attic of her childhood home. In the years that followed, the house would eventually be put up for auction and become a tourist attraction. However, the ghost of Lucy remains present, running through the false doors and up the staircases of this bizarre home. Whether she was possessed or simply insane remains unknown, but her haunting of the Granchester mansion is undeniable. However, Lucy isn't the only ghost to appear in a Fallout game. Back in Fallout 2, there was actually a quest for Anna Winslow, a spirit who became trapped in this earthly realm after her locket was stolen. Other creepy goings on can be found in Fallout New Vegas, at the Good Springs Cemetery, where the whispers of the dead can be heard around the graves. Now, it's pretty clear the psychic hired by the Granchesters was a fraud, but that doesn't mean that paranormal powers of the mind aren't present in the Fallout games. In many cases, the psychic power is tied to things like the forced evolutionary virus, such as in the case of the Master. However, the source of other characters' powers are much more supernatural. Mama Murphy, for example, is able to tap into what she calls the sight through chems and is able to predict the future. Another example of this is Clay, more commonly known as the Forecaster, in Fallout New Vegas. He is an orphaned child living under a bridge who earns caps by sending his thoughts to curious travellers. Like Mama Murphy, he can provide these accurate yet vague predictions of the future, however his powers don't require drugs. Even Clay himself is unsure where his thoughts come from, but it appears they always arrive with terrible migraines. As a result, he wears a psychic nullifier to keep him from thinking too much. However, when he takes the nullifier off to use his powers, he suffers overwhelming pain. Interestingly, the psychic nullifier also existed in the first Fallout, and is considered in that game to be a product of alien technology. 
Aliens actually crop up again in connection to psychic powers in the case of Lorenzo. He uncovered an alien artifact during an archaeological expedition to Arabia, which granted him a number of inhuman abilities, including telekinesis. The name Dunwich will no doubt be burned into the minds of many Fallout players, as it's the source of some of the game's most creepy and supernatural events. First appearing in Fallout 3, the Dunwich building looks like little more than an abandoned office, however beneath the surface lies a series of disturbing caverns. Venturing down into the dark, you'll be repeatedly struck by hallucinations of pre-war times, along with uncovering the unfortunate tale of Jamie, a wastelander whose father was driven mad after discovering a strange book and being compelled to return it to its source. Born again, here, El Hazared. Yes, yes. Eventually, you will come across an eerie obelisk being worshipped by several feral ghouls. Amongst them is Jamie, who had followed his father here, and both of them had been mutated. This obelisk is in fact an altar to a mysterious entity that is also worshipped by the Swamp Folk. In the Point Lookout DLC, they are in possession of a strange book, the same book that Jamie's father once had. The ancient home is said to possess dark powers, and most recently has been used by the Swamp Folk in gruesome and disturbing rituals. It's clearly connected to the obelisk, and if you press it against it, it will be consumed in a flash of fire. Dunwich also appears in Fallout 4 as the Dunwich Borrows, a quarry with its own mysterious tunnels under the surface. Delving into the depths, you will once again get flashbacks to before the Great War, and you begin to uncover what was going on here. First, there is a creepy shrine that was once used to perform rituals. However, underneath where it once stood is now a well of irradiated water. Diving down into the well, you'll find another altar and a sacrificial blade, believed to be tied to the same mysterious entity as the obelisk. In the ground next to it is a partially revealed face of what appears to be a large, silvery statue that was possibly being excavated as a part of the quarry's mining operation. In the cases of the Dunwich Building and Borrows, both locations are accompanied by stories of people being driven insane by the entities that hold influence over that location. Jamie and his father are one example, and a raider named Hugo, who you can find near the Borrows, seems to have been driven to commit suicide by whatever entity was speaking to him. Yes, of course. It's next to my bed. A will. It's loaded. Have you found any other incidents of the supernatural in Fallout? Let me know in the comments below. As always, this is James for Curse, saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game.